Alright guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So, training camp for the New York Jets is right around the corner, and I could not be more excited, and I know you're pumped up too. I mean, this training, I, I personally can't think of a training camp that's been this hyped up since, I mean, I think I have to go back 10, 11 years. Absolutely insane. Alright, mind-blowing to say the least, but in this one, I wanted to take a look at a couple positional battles that'll be taking place at training camp. Okay, there's a lot of positions that are wide open here. That's what kind of comes with a brand new coaching staff, a lot of fresh faces coming off of a two-win season. There are a lot of open positions. There's going to be a lot of competition here. I can't wait to see how it all unfolds, but let's talk about a few positions here, starting with corner. So when we're looking at corner, I feel like this is one of those positions that obviously has a lot of different candidates. I feel like a lot of guys on this roster uh, have an opportunity to blossom throughout training camp, okay? Because lit and I've, it's crazy. I feel this way literally about every single player here, every single player in the cornerback room. They all have untapped potential, and they all have so much room to grow as players, whether they're coming in as a rookie, whether they've spent the last couple of seasons with the New York Jets, or a newcomer from a different team. The roster currently consists of Bless Austin. Michael Carter II, Jason Pinnock, Corey Ballantyne, Bryce Hall, Brandon Eccles, and then of course Lamar Jackson. I feel like all of those guys will have a pretty good opportunity to win these starting spots. Corners in the cover four, cover three system need to be rangy, instinctual players with a lot of bursts, a lot of acceleration. Uh, they need to be able to cover a lot of ground in not a lot of time. I feel like from a, and by the way, the, uh, the film study plays a big, big part in it as well, but from a physical standpoint, I feel like a lot of the corners that we have in this locker room possess a lot of those traits. I would say right now the front runners to win this position include Bryce Hall, Bless Austin, and then in the slot, Michael Carter II. Now, of course, the Jets can maybe add a body here or there, whether whether it be a waiver pickup or a free agency pickup as training camp progresses. But man, I'm looking at preseason and the Jets corners, I mean, we have our work cut out for us. Like on paper, we go up against some pretty solid wide receivers like Kadarius Toney, Kenny Galladay, Sterling Shepard, uh, Devontae Smith, Devontae Adams. Adams, uh, just to name a few. Okay, so the cornerback battle should be a lot of fun. It's going to be really intriguing to kind of monitor the entire situation as we move throughout training camp. The next positional battle is running back, and this one's actually really, really significant because you take a look at the offense that's being ran with Mike LaFleur, this is a run-first attack, uh, or at least that's what it was in San Francisco, okay? So if it's the same system and the same philosophy, we can kind of expect the same thing here. So when we're taking a look at the roster, it's Tevin Coleman, Michael Carter, LaMichael Pirine, and Ty Johnson. I feel like all four of those players will have a lot of time to show off what they can do in training camp and preseason, but we all know this. The running back position is not just some one-man Man show. It's not just, oh, who wins the starting running back spot? Great, he's going to be it and everybody else is going to be riding the bench. No, this is one of those positions that gets beat up. This is, you know, it's a it's a high mileage position. There's a lot of rotation. You need fresh legs. You need that third down back. Even, even the best ones out there, Christian McCaffrey and the Carolina Panthers, he's not out there every single play, every single week. You gotta, fl you gotta flex guys in when you can. So when I look at the roster, Tevin Coleman and Michael Carter do a lot of the same thing things really, really well. I do feel like the RB1 at the end of the day will be split between Carter and Coleman. I feel like there will be opportunities for Ty Johnson though, because Ty Johnson fits the system really, really well. He does. I don't expect Ty Johnson just to be released. I think there could be something there. And then in the case of Lamichael Pirine, I definitely feel like, you know, and, and we've heard the, uh, the, the question about a system fit, systematic fit. In this offense, is there really a place for him? And I, I, I do think there is a spot in uh, third and shorts and maybe even fourth and shorts as well, like, you know, running packages and then goal line situations as well. I feel like Piran, because he's that downhill thumping running back, we just he he kind of he just provides that element that the other guys don't really have. So even though he might not be the best systematic fit on paper, I do feel like he might have that small role with the team. Next up, right guard. I would say this is the consensus question mark on the team heading into training camp. Okay, we feel great about left tackle, right tackle, left guard. We have our fingers crossed that Connor McGovern can get back to his Bronco form. If he does, amazing. But right guard is completely up in the air. Cam Clark, Alex Lewis, Dan Feeney, uh, Greg Van Roten, Tristan Hodge. Could it even be a Connor McDermott who steps up, who emerges throughout training camp? Who knows? This position is completely wide open. What do we know? We know Greg Van Roten has been the go-to guy so far. We know Mike LaFleur's zone blocking attack here 
requires quick feet. It requires being able to get to the second level effectively. You have to be able to move well in short spaces. You just have to be athletic, right? You have to be an athletic guard if you want to be really, really effective in this zone blocking attack here. So even though I love Tristan Hodge and I really want Cam Clark to emerge and I, I just want to see what he can possibly do, uh, no preseason last year. So we have pretty much nothing on Cam Clark last year's fourth round pick. Um, I think it'll go to Greg Van Roten or Alex Lewis. Uh, I, I feel like there was a reason why Joe Douglas restructured Lewis's deal, and when you look at it from a playing time or playing experience standpoint, both of those guys have the edge. All right, now you can maybe argue with Dan Feeney. I do feel like Feeney's more fit for the left guard position. We'll see what happens, but there will be an opportunity, even for the young guys. I mean, this isn't like an offensive line that's like impossible to crack the starting lineup here. I mean, Connor McDermott, uh, Cam Clark, like we just talked about, these guys will have chances to impress, to possibly win the starting gig here. It's completely wide open. I can't wait to see how it all plays out. Moving on. Next up, we got the edge position opposite of Carl Lawson here. A lot of different candidates. Vinny Curry, John Franklin Myers, Bryce Huff. Could it be a Jabari Zuniga or maybe even a Ronald Blair? Ronald Blair was recently brought in by the team. And look, in the 4-3 Robert Sala defense, the edge rushers have got to get after the passer. If you can't get after the passer, you at least have to disrupt the pocket. You at least have to get the quarterback on the move. Now, does that have to happen every single play for the defense to have success? No, but that's the main... Those, that's what spearheads the defense of success here. If you can get the quarterback down, you will see a lot of three and outs. You will see a lot of punts. Okay, you will see a lot of uh, panic from the quarterback position. If we, if we continue this trend of struggling to get after the quarterback, struggling to sack the quarterback, bring him down, ending plays, forcing him to throw it away early, we will be eaten alive. We will be eaten alive. Look at the 49ers defense uh, back when Salah was first hired. When they didn't have that edge, uh, when they didn't have that edge pressure, okay, it was it was a little hard to watch. But once they started getting guys in the building, guys that can disrupt in the middle, and then of course on the outside like Nick Bosa and whatnot, that's when we started to see the defense really start to pick up and turn on. Okay, so really when I'm taking a look at this roster, by the way, uh, Hamika Rashid is is another guy, undrafted free agent from Oregon State, disruptive, explosive, fast player off the edge. I forgot to mention him earlier, but I would say right now the front runner, it's tough. It, it truly is tough. We know Carl Lawson's going to do his thing uh, on the other side, but I want to say it's going to be John Franklin Myers because of the upside, because of the physical traits, the speed, the size, and what he's been able to do with you know multiple responsibilities. This is a guy who was more of an interior rusher last year. Now he's being paired. He's being paired up with some really solid talent next to him. Guys like Quinn and Williams and like we talked about Lawson, Sheldon Rankins, Futakasi on the inside. Like there's a lot of talent here on this defensive line. I feel like if Franklin Myers can get one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside, this guy can wreak havoc. I also feel like Vinny Curry, though, was brought in for a reason. A veteran piece off the edge, a reliable guy. We know what Vinny Curry is. He's not going to give us 15 sacks, but he's not going to be some liability out there either. I would say right now, the coaching staff is going to implement a rotation at that position between Vinny Curry, JFM, and Ronald Blair. I do feel like Blair, and you know, currently he's not 100% healthy, but I do feel like Blair will have a role within this defense as a defensive end. Just former playing experience with Robert Sala in the system fits the system unproven guys at the position and he's been you know he's obviously had a lot of playing experience so uh, I feel like it will be a three-man rotation at that other defensive end spot and last but definitely not least tight end what is happening at tight end here we have a lot of guys here Ryan Griffin Chris Herndon, Tyler Croft, Kenny Yeboah. I feel like those are going to be the four guys, the four uh, focus points as we transition into training camp in the preseason. Those are going to be the guys that get the majority of the reps here. I would say right now, Tyler Croft and Chris Herndon are probably going to be the front runners in different packages. I feel like Tyler Croft will be really effective in the running game. He'll be really effective in the red zone and he'll, he'll, he'll be really effective in third and short situations, right? Those bootleg play action and rollouts where Zach Wilson can just hit Croft for a quick gain of six, quick gain of four, bam, third and one, going to Croft, big body guy, good hands, can box out nickel corners, can box out safeties, no problem, but can also outrun outside linebackers. I feel like Chris Herndon may be more so fit for the second
second and 12, the passing situations where Chris Hernan can hurt you over the middle of the field, quick little curl routes, uh, quick dump offs and whatnot for Zach Wilson to be a, uh, a security blanket there. As far as Kenny Yeboah is concerned, insane upside i mean you look at what this guy did at old miss there's a reason why he is so hyped up amongst the masses right amongst tons of jets fans out there we are all excited about yaboa let's see what he can do uh hopefully he can be one of those preseason warriors make the team and stick with it you know and who knows who knows what will happen if chris herndon doesn't turn it around who maybe kenny yaboa is right on his tail you never know what could happen as far as ryan griffin is concerned i feel like he, his role would probably It'll, it'll be between Croft or Griffin, but I, I, I want to give that extra edge to Croft because at the end of the day, this was a Joe Douglas signing this offseason with this coaching staff. Ryan Griffin was brought in some time ago, so we don't know how Mike LaFleur feels about Griffin. What if the biggest reason why we brought Croft in was to replace a Ryan Griffin? At the end of the day, they do have a similar skill set, so I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section about some of these different positional battles. What are you excited for? What are you expecting? Who do you want to win some of these battles? And uh, I know we didn't cover every single one. So if you think of a uh, you know position that you want to talk about, just drop it down below in the comment section. Uh, it should be really, uh, I can't wait for it. I really, really can't wait for it. By the way, the Jets fans sold out training camp. Are you kidding me? Best fans in the world. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Jets.